What's going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel Anderson. If you're new to the channel, my name is Brooks and this is my 2008 ML63 AMG. Today we're going to be doing some needed work and a nice little upgrade that I'll get you guys in tune with right now. Alright, so number one, we got our gigantic 390 millimeter Brembo front rotors. The front rotors on this thing are a little bit tired, actually a lot of bit tired, and it's time to be changed. So snagged a great deal on these it was 160 dollars for the pair um can't really beat that so very happy on that and for brake pads we're going to be running these these are from centric they're the pq pro these are like a ceramic pra uh, pad with kind of performance in mind um so these should do well and should limit somewhat brake dust even though i don't really care about that i know a lot of German owners love the non brake dusty pads, but I could really care less to be honest. I want performance and longevity. Um, and last but not least, we got our Motorsports Hardware Stud Conversion Kit. These are 90 millimeter and 14 by one and a half with uh, R14 ball seat open lug nuts. Very, very happy uh, to have them send these out. Great deal on these if you don't already know. Um, I am pretty much a lifetime converted uh, believer in the stud kits. All four of the cars will have them on now, the other three already do. It's just way easier to work with these, it's easier to get your wheels on and off. Um, I'm not a big fan of lug bolts. For those that don't know and might not believe me, the only reason car manufacturers use lug bolts is because it's a cheaper, more cost effective way of doing things because it's one part versus two. So yeah there's no benefit to having lug bolts uh, or necessarily having lug studs uh, in general but studs are just easier in my case and they look cool plus if you're a person that runs different wheel setups it makes life a ton easier compared to lug bolts because every time you change offsets on a lug bolt setup you have to get different length shafts on the lug bolts with these, you get a 90 millimeter set, you're good. You can run up to like a 25 millimeter spacer on them as well, safely, and yeah, it's just a lot more flexible option. Cost efficient as well when you look at it. One time purchase, run any wheel. If you ran different wheels and have to get different lug bolt setups, you gotta pay for good lug bolts, 50, 60, 70 bucks a pair each time. These retail for about, I think 80 to $90. For the kit, definitely a great, great value from an awesome company, Motorsport Hardware. So plan of action right now, I'm actually gonna start at the rear cause I don't need to touch that brake setup um, back there. So I'm gonna do the studs real quick on the back side. I'll show you how that's done. And then we'll move up to the front for the last kind of bigger part of the job, doing the brakes and the pads. I've never worked on these calipers. They're mighty massive and uh, a little bit different than the AMG ones that I'm used to with the pins. So that'll be a little bit of figuring out time on one side and then hopefully it'll go smooth on the second one that we do. All right, one other thing, special shout out to uh, Sam AMG again. I was curious because the air suspension, is there any proper way to lift this car or anything you shouldn't do, but sounds like it's pretty straightforward. Uh, for lifting the rear, if you have the factory jack, like or the factory uh, tow hitch like I do, you can definitely lift from here. I uh, notice mine's a little corroded. We're gonna take care of that. But otherwise, um, you can lift from the factory diff. If you don't have a factory tow hitch, he highly recommended not trying to do it from here if uh, you have an aftermarket hitch. So yeah, that and then front of the engine has a mounting block, just like all the other Mercedes have a lift block underneath the engine for you to jack from. So nothing out of the norm i just wanted to double check because it is air suspension some cars air suspension you got to do it you know a certain technique so anyways all right guys this is a heavy beast <laughs> i uh got it jacked up just enough got about an inch of clearance underneath with the use of a few pieces of two by four and the right jack settings but yeah now we are safe to pull these off go ahead and get these studs thrown in wheel is off i'm gonna go ahead and clean up the rotor surface just some wire brushes there's also some corrosion found on the shocks and things so i'm gonna try to scrub that off as best i can and hit it with some uh, rust converter while i'm in here so not too crazy but like we said this was from canada and 
it's known to have a little bit of corrosion here and there so let's take care of it so it doesn't get any worse all right rust converter is on some of those problem spots not the prettiest but better than nothing surface is cleaned up here so now i'm gonna go ahead and throw these in the process pretty simple throw a little bit of loctite your choice red or blue i use the red stuff doesn't take much just a little bit uh anchor them in by hand and then they're 25 foot pounds for the black ones the ray studs and 20 pounds or hand tight for the silver ones all right those are all on torqued down to 25 foot pounds everything went smooth look nice and uh we'll see what it looks like with the wheel back on all right guys i just went to town with doing some rest conversion in the back here uh, one of them is using is just the stuff that goes on clear and kind of turns black. Uh, the axle shafts had quite a bit of corrosion on them, so I sanded them down and just resprayed those. Not the prettiest job like before, but that's okay. It's uh, efficient and will do the job. You can see like evidence of corrosion when you look at things like that. <laughs> the uh, exhaust bolts those are never coming off um, but all in all I mean people that are in like the east or anywhere where there's salt are probably laughing at me because this is hardly anything but um, around here it's not like the most common thing to see so yeah just taking care of the little bit that I can and go from there all right there they are without the uh, lug nuts on the lug nuts are 19 millimeter by the way so go ahead and snug these on real quick all right there they are and these lug nuts get torqued down to 105 foot pounds all right on to the other side right now and this side is not as bad with the rust looks like mother nature helped protect this side <laughs> it's dirty and uh yeah not nearly as corroded as the other side so that's good uh, but any little spots i see i'll try to scrub down and spray all right guys the back is down We're moving on to the front so we can take care of the brakes and the last of the stud kit jacking it up like i said pad is right there i always put a wood block in between just to keep it somewhat fresh but anyways get it jacked up see what these things look like all right guys got these uh brakes underway now i'm um, just kind of inspecting everything it looks like these are basically a giant version of what you'll find on like the gls and uh, other mls with the bigger brakes uh, any v8 models or things like that so there are these two caps that i popped off and inside of those you can see there is a you see like a torx head or allen head that will relieve two pins that hold the pressure um, there are the bolts that hold the actual caliper on and besides that, um, you know, this is like a retaining clip of some kind. So you'll have to kind of experiment and check some things out, but um, shouldn't be too crazy. All right, guys, making progress. Um, I was confused on how to uh, pop the caliper off, but I didn't know that this whole little logo piece was all part of the retaining spring. So you actually just pop this with a screwdriver and it kind of just flung out so yeah now this is chilling there just comparing the new pads i got with the old ones uh, looks like somebody put some techstar pads on it at one point i don't know if these are factory probably not um but these are the centric pads pretty beefy and uh there is a difference for the spring clips on the back the ones that are uh, kind of protruding with the top portion are the inside ones and the ones with just the left and right are the outside all right old rotor is out getting everything cleaned up right now there's the uh, inner portion of the caliper oh, not too bad rotor came off easy i was worried it might have been seized on there a bit but came off nice and easy so Get that cleaned up and get the new one installed. 
All right, one side done, not too difficult. Once you figure it out, uh, to get the spring back in, start the uh, ends. And then I was holding it while Mike was pushing the screwdriver to get these last little legs in right here. So yeah, outside first and then inner portion. If you're doing it by yourself, you just hold it with your right hand and press on the other side with your left screwdriver. All right, time for studs and then we'll move on to the other side. All right guys, so driver's side is done. Mike showed me pretty much what to do on this side and then I took care of this side. He's just uh, squeezing the caliper down right now. Second set of pads ready to go in. Um, the passenger side was missing the retaining screw. The kit came with one for each. I ended up using the factory one on the driver's side and I ended up using the one from the kit since the other one was missing. A um, little bit of brake grease or um, what's it called silicone on the back of the pads to reduce noise but I think that's more so what the clips are for so it's probably not necessary but it doesn't hurt uh, what else that's about it just gonna get it buttoned up and get it back down um, for the pins on the back put a little bit of grease on those those are the ones that hold the uh, top part of the caliper on Man, it'd be nice to see this thing once it gets a proper wash. Haven't been able to yet just because weather hasn't been great. Hasn't really been worth it to do it. Let me know what you guys think, by the way. I'm, I'm on the fence about it, but I would like to find the non-running board style side skirts and paint match them to silver. I think it would look kind of cool, but anyways, random thoughts. All right, so finishing things up. Uh, one thing... These pads, for whatever reason, the uh, wear sensor didn't fit firmly in there. So I kind of silicone wedged it in and hopefully it'll hold position. Those things basically just uh, sit like right there. And then as soon as they get worn down, they set off the brake light. So it shouldn't really be a big deal, but hopefully it'll stay still. Yeah, all in all. Finish up, just gotta put the last set of uh, studs in right now. All right guys, she is all done, buttoned up. Now I gotta go for a drive, break in the pads and all that good stuff. But but overall, wasn't too tricky once you figured out uh, the front calipers. Like I said, I never messed with those, but uh, pretty cool design and not too bad to work on. That, that front clip though, would be difficult to put on by yourself. So if you are doing it by yourself, you have to get a little creative, but two people makes it easy uh, but yeah we go take this thing on a drive all right you guys turned into kind of a crappy weather day right now but i'm gonna go break in these pads um don't have to do anything crazy really some people have like really strict things they do but i usually just drive and try to be hard on the brakes as i'm coming to stop lights and things and uh get some heat into them and yeah not too complicated so big thing i'm relieved about is just getting a chance to get under the car and take care of any corrosion that i saw uh, i do plan on grabbing like one of the uh, uh i don't know what it's called like the oil coating i know amsoil makes one there's a lot of companies that make them but basically like a, a rust uh, prevention uh, oil coating so i'm gonna grab one of those and just kind of go throughout the whole bottom of the car and I'll probably do it on a couple of the cars, to be honest, um, just to protect things. There's there's not really issue with rust over here because there's not salt that gets used on the roads a lot, but figure it'd probably be a good idea for this car since it had spent time uh, up north. So yeah, let's go ahead and go for a cruise and get this thing warmed up. These pads did have that special kind of like brake coating on them or a uh, Break in coating, sorry. Uh, the red stuff that was on the meat parts of the pads. So, yeah, I caught a red light back there. I'm just trying to catch red lights and get up to speed and slam on the brakes, kind of, and hold them firmly until you get to a stop. So, let's see, we got a red light coming up here. I'm at about 40 miles per hour. I'll wait. And.
thing has such good brakes that <laughs> I have to like really be careful doing this with anyone behind me because it stops quick. Uh, one other thing I should mention too before I forget, um, with the Motorsports Hardware Kit, usually like a week after you do them, you want to retorque, um, not the studs themselves, but uh, just check your um, lug nuts. Just a good idea, just to double check as everything kind of seats and gets used to uh, new positioning and yeah. Uh, last time I did it, I checked them and none of them had come out of torque, but some people have had that um, happen. So it's a good idea to check about a week after, after you do some driving with them. All right, one last one right here. We got a good spot to brake hard. still had to be kind of gentle with it car behind me is probably like what the hell are you doing <laughs> yeah they feel good already they're not they're not catching anymore feel good but we'll keep doing this Alright guys, well that'll wrap it up for this one the brakes broke in well nice and smooth now no issues all in all, easy project. Took a little bit of time just because I was doing all the rust conversion and all that stuff. But overall, if you're planning on doing this, a couple hours, you should be good. Um, the Motorsports Hardware Kit, can't thank them enough for sending that out. Love, love, love that product. Like I said, I run it on all the cars and any Mercedes that I ever get in future or whatever else, that's a go-to thing because I just prefer it. I think it's a much cleaner look. Uh, much simpler to work on makes wheel swapping a lot easier less complicated so yeah can't thank them enough brake rotors that i got i'm super happy with 160 for the pair can't really beat it the centric pads seem to be good quality uh the only thing that didn't work was the brake pad sensor not fitting in secure enough but it's in there it's not going to like come loose i don't think but yeah even if it popped out it's not gonna cause the little warning on the, on the dash. It's only if it gets broken that it causes that warning. So not too worried about it. Uh, things coming up, we are slowly preparing. I know I've said this in multiple videos, but we're slowly preparing all the little bits and pieces of the manual swap process that we need for the E420. I finally got the fittings. We are getting the BMW shift joint to work that we got from Garagistic, huge shout out to them. Um, and what else i just need to measure i need to measure for drive shaft the overall length of the transmission and yeah you guys have heard me say this in a couple videos now but i'm just getting excited i'm hoping that by april mid-april we can get it underway and hopefully uh you know once spring is really in the full swing we got that thing done and ready to go so yep that'll be it for this one thank you guys so much for watching let me know if you guys have any questions like comment subscribe and i will see you all on the next one Peace.